Hello everyone, I'm Robin Pearson, and I'm here to show you what remains of the Church of the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. In our fifth and final video, we're going to step outside and have a look around the gardens of the museum, as well as showing you the best spot to get photos of the building. As with many Byzantine sites in Istanbul, remnants of the Roman past lie around outside for us to discover, and there are several pieces worth seeking out. One is an ambo, or pulpit, taken from elsewhere in the city. This may help you visualise what the furnishings of the church would have looked like, as we discussed in part two of our series. Another sits right next to the ticket barriers. Take a moment to look at this statue base, and you'll notice that it has Greek and Latin inscriptions on each side. The base once held up a statue of the Empress Ilia Evdoxia, the wife of the Emperor Arcadius. The Latin side simply says, To our mistress, Ilia Evdoxia, forever Augusta, Simplicius of Clarissimus rank, prefect of the city, dedicated this. The Greek side elaborates. See the porphyry column and the silver empress in the place where the emperors give rule to the city. Of what name is she, you might ask? Evdoxia. Who set her up? Simplicius, offspring of mighty consuls, the noble prefect. As you can see, the silver statue and porphyry column have gone but the base remains as solid as ever. Why is this such an interesting survival? Because the unveiling of this statue led indirectly to the destruction of the original Hagia Sophia. The silver statue of the Empress was erected in 403 AD, not far from the city's cathedral, and the accompanying celebrations disturbed the patriarch who was giving a service at the same time. The man in question was John Chrysostom. The golden-mouthed bishop was already on poor terms with the empress, and he railed against her vanity in his sermon. This indiscreet outburst got back to the imperial couple, who ordered John to be sent into exile. But the popular patriarch's congregation rioted, and eventually started fires which consumed the city's first Hagia Sophia. The cathedral was rebuilt by Arcadius's son, Theodosius II, and stood until it, too, was burnt down during the Nica riots. But though nothing remains of the first church, there is plenty of this second Hagia Sophia visible in the gardens. Helpfully, reconstructions of what this church looked like have been put up inside and outside, showcasing this impressive colonnaded entranceway the foundations of which have been uncovered and are visible just before you enter the museum. Plenty of the decoration for this elaborate portico has survived in good condition and is on display between the cafe and bathrooms outside. This beautiful monumental sculpture showcases the vast resources available to the skilled artisans of 4th and 5th century Constantinople, as we saw in the Hippodrome. That's all for the gardens around the western entrance, but if you exit the building via the vestibule of the warriors, then on your left is a small baptistry. This is one of the few outer buildings that you can still visit. It was used as a storage room and then a tomb during the Ottoman era. Inside you can see another imperial sarcophagus with defaced crosses on it, as well as an actual baptismal font. This massive marble pool was only unearthed during excavations earlier this century. You've now completed your visit to the Hagia Sophia, but if you want to get good photos of the building, then you might want to take a short walk. Most visitors will simply make their way across the park towards the Blue Mosque, and you can certainly get some good shots from this angle. 
But if you visit the nearby Seven Hills Hotel and go up to their roof terrace, then you can get something to drink while enjoying some of the best views of the Hagia Sophia in the city. What else can I say before we finish? Oh yes, Istanbul is well known for its many cats, and a couple of them officially live in the museum. I didn't see them during my visit until right then. And yes, I know I'm wearing orange shoes. It's a long story. If you'd like more detailed information about the Hagia Sophia, then visit thebyzantinelegacy.com. It's a fantastic website providing breakdowns of the Byzantine buildings that can still be seen today. And there, you'll find most of the still images and sketches used in these videos. If you'd like to know more about John Chrysostom or the construction of the Hagia Sophia, then check out these episodes of the History of Byzantium podcast. <laughs>